I'm economist and professor in the University of National General Sarmiento in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And today I'm gonna present this, this work about Latin American critical economic thought. Thanks to Zema for the invitation and the REPECT organization. Uh, this presentation will be about these topics. At, at first, we will discuss why should we study Latin American critical economic thought. Then we, intro we will introduce a 20th century dependency theory uh, as the main economic theory regarding critical economic thought in Latin America. Then we will discuss some topics in Marini's Dialectic of Dependency, the main book of this school of thought. Uh, after that, we will present the transformations of world capitalism and the new conditions of dependency. And to on the end, we will discuss some contemporary debates on dependency theory. So the first question is why should we study uh, Latin American critical economic thought? Uh, as you will acknowledge, uh, this line of thought will allow us to elaborate a critical analytical framework to the concept of development and national developmentalist ideals. Uh, as you will understand later in this presentation, this will allow us to understand some challenges uh, posed by the new international division of labor and the changes uh, in the geography of capitalist accumulation uh, for the popular sectors and workers in Latin America. We have some classical issues, 20th century issues uh, in the 21st century, like the development of the internal market, the segmentation of consumption, productive specialization and type of insertion in the international division of labor. Also, we have a uh, labor market and social structure characteristics. Uh, the external sector will be the main topic of the dependency we will see the external vulner vulnerability and the technological dependence and we will see as well some production transfer and appropriation of the economic surplus issues so to begin with uh, we will present some characteristics of the dependency theory uh, this will be the the main question the the classical dependency theory will answer is can latin america experience an autonomous and independent capitalist development so uh, in the last century the debates were between the reform and revolutionary uh, school of thoughts uh, in the reformist school of thoughts we we can uh, see uh, the Alliance of, for Progress, the ECLAC Structuralism, and the de Developmentalism, de Dependency Theory. And, well, we have the Marxist Dependency Theory in the Revolutionary Road. But in the 21th century, as we will see, this debate will switch because reform and revolution is no longer the main topic we don't we no longer have the the bipolar world between the us and the ussr powers so we will try to to update some of these debates uh, the theoretical influences of the dependency theory we we will find the classical marxism uh, the imperialism theorists the monopoly capital theorists like Baran and Suisse and mainly the Marxists and neo-Marxists of the 20th century, like Mandel, Bethlehem, Emmanuel, Amin, Ballerstein, and Ari. And the Latin American Structuralism School, mainly Prebisch and Celso Furtado. This has, these are some of the theoretical influences of the dependency theory. But to understand its 
course, we, we need to, to understand first its origin. Uh, it's a school of thought who was born around the 1960s uh, in the context, in the rational context of the Cuban Revolution that was in 1959. And also the decolonization process in Africa and Asia in the post-colonialism ideas. Uh, the rise of national liberation movements in the third world ideology. These are all the, the ideologies in the 1960s, 1970s, uh, Latin America was exp experienced this tension between reform and revolution. The Cuban revolution was uh, a key movement for the economic thought. So the Marxist dependency theory takes that to, to express a revolutionary road to to release from the underdevelopment status. So the relationship between the process of cap capitalist development in the center and the underdevelopment in the periphery will be the main issue that the dependency theory will discuss. They will discuss also the critique of the Bonapartist developmental state. Uh, Bonapartist it's called a state that is both above society, above the conflicts between capital, in, capital and work, above the conflict between capitalists. And the Bonapartist idea of the state uh, is what lies behind the, this national developmentalism uh, school of thoughts. Uh, we also have one of the key elements of the dependency theory here in the need to understanding the stratification of the world in nations with different hierarchies. That is the, mm -hmm. the global north and the global south, like the two greater hierarchies categories. It's between military, political, economical, technological uh, differences between nations and uh, at, at the end, the impossibility of undertaking an independent economic development path between this capitalist theme system. Of course, this, this is the idea that lags behind these 20th century debates. So to, to resume the, some of the, the main diagnosis made by, by the classical dependency theory, in the 20th century, we have these five points. The first one being the rejection of the theory of Latin American feudalism and the characterization of the colonial structure and the current structure as capitalist. Uh, there were many debates uh, regarding the feudalist of, or capitalist mode of production in Latin America. This dependency theory is, is saying that all the issues regarding and in the underdevelopment in America in Latin America are issues of capitalism development, not lack of capitalism. Okay. The second point is a, a criticism of the concept of the progressive national bourgeois and the perspective of, of an independent capitalist development, because this this point is the discussion with the populist movements, national developmentalist movements that were trying to uh, give impulse to this alliance between the, the working class and the national bourgeois. Uh, Marxist depend dependency theory is critical of this alliance mm -hmm. in the 20th uh, century. Uh, the third point, it will be the identifying this failure of populist experience as the result of the nature of the social formations in Latin America. We have some structural dependence. Uh, it's the structural relation between our uh, leading class and the leading classes of the developed uh, countries. Then we have the, this discovery 
of the origin of economic underdevelopment, not in feudalism, but in the proper character of dependent uh, capitalist development. And to end with, we have this impossibility of a national democratic path for social development. This will be the, the main topics of the classical dependency theory. So we now will present briefly the, the main topics of the Marini dialectic of dependency, that is the the classical work uh, of the Marxist dependency theory and Raimondo Marini being the main representative of this, this economic uh, thought school. So in, in the dia dialectic of dependence, Marini uh, presents some topics discussion, and discussions regarding international division of labor the transfer of value and an equal exchange path between the developed and underdeveloped countries, this concept of super exploitation of the workforce, also this, this development of capital dependent cycle as a, a new and special way of, of development of capitalism. Uh, then uh, he presents the reasons why industrialization failed in Latin America and some consequences of this, like the segmentation of the consumption and the failure of the development and state as well. So he defines dependence as a relationship of subordination between formally independent nations within which the production relations of subordinate nations are modified or recreated to ensure expanded reproduction. And then we have this quote from Immanuel Wallerstein that explains this core periphery relationship as the relationship between the most monopolized production sectors and the most competitive uh, sectors and therefore the relationship between high profit and low profit production activities that are with low salary. These relationships between world capital and world labor force, but it's also a relationship between the strongest and the weakest capitalist. The most important consequence of the integration of all kinds of activities is the transfers of surplus value from the peripheral sector to the nuclear sector. That is, not only from the works, from the workers to the owners, but from the owners of the peripheral productive activities to the owners of nuclear activities. So this transfer of surplus value between all these stages will be the main issue in the dependency theory. We have a low salary labor force and we have a uh, productive structure controlled by uh, external firms, by multinational firms. With this uh, structure, will the, the surplus value transfer will be the main topic on the dependency relations and the reproduction of these relations. Uh, so we have two types of reproduction cycles of capital being normal in the core countries and dependent on the periphery according to Marini's views on the industrial capitalism in the 20th century. So the normal reproduction cycle of capital will be this coherence between production and circulation uh, that is between production, wages, consumption, the, the size of the domestic market and also uh, the predominance of the extraction of uh, relative surplus value, yes, productivity and wages. And in the, the, in the peripheral countries, we have the dependent cycle of capital being this, the split between the production and circulation because the production uh, is made to exports. That's, uh, 
the consequences of that being low wages because they are seen as a cost, low mass consumption and restricted domestic market. The, the firms uh, producing in, in the export model countries uh, sees the, the wage as a cost. So uh, we have the pro predominance of a fraction of absolute surplus value. Well, that will be the main topics of the 20th century uh, dependency theory. We will now see some features of the 21 centuries dependency theory uh, after the transformations of the world capitalism in the 70s, 80s and, and 90s. So with the neoliberalism, we have experience a switch in the, the form of the accumulation of capital uh, and capital trans transformed, mutated into an open, unregulated and disintermediated form. This will, uh, this have allowed the financialization of the capital and the constitution of a world market with global hyper competition between capital and workers, the globalization, right? Uh, through the action of finance, uh, the product and Forbes have a uh, restructured and relocated in search of co competitiveness, being competitiveness sometimes uh, based on low salaries or natural resources, etc. And what we see as well in the last decades of the 20th century is this confirm configuration of global value change, the productive segmentation and the subcontracting change. So the capital itself changed its it way and its scope of the production and developed some of the segments of product of the production in the periphery. So now uh, the dependent situation switched. It has some points in common with the past situation, but it also updated. So the, the issue of the development and the autonomous development path have sw switched as well. So we have this quote from Reinaldo Carcagnolo and Paulo Nakatani, those uh, two Brazilian economists, uh, saying that the current conditions of development with the internationalization of real capital and predominance of parasitic speculative capital no longer allow an exit in the molds of an old national developmentalist model founded on the alliance between workers and the national bourgeois, which may oppose the internationalist big bourgeois. In the peripheral countries now, uh, where there was a significant industrialization process, an important part of that industry is already denationalized as a consequence of the internationalization of the capital of the developed countries of the North and the implantation of the neoliberal policies. So the national bourgeois that emerged and developed with this industrialization process currently have their interests closely linked to the industrial and financial bourgeois of the central countries. So this will be the main argument against this national development al, developmentalist ideas which use this uh, bonapartist idea of state as well thinking that a national development path will it uh, can achieve a national autonomous development in the industry uh, the situation today is that the, this alliance is no longer possible because the productive structure is denationalized. So the core decisions, the investment decisions, uh, the growth decisions depends on foreign actors. This is the, the key issue regarding dependency now. Uh, surplus value uh, transfer and 
about all these core decisions regarding what to produce and where to produce, what to invest, where to invest, are decisions that t are taken by, by these uh, foreign actors. So to end uh, with this presentation, we, we will present some contemporary debates of dependency theory uh, in Latin America. We have these three topics. The first being extractivism, primarization, and losing of industrial capacities. The second one being social decline and political authoritarianism. And the third one being stru structural, external, and debt and fiscal deficit and the reboot of the crisis. These three topics uh, are linked with this dependent, this structural dependency uh, situation. The first one, Latin America has and has been and still is a provider of basic products to the world markets, mainly export uh, export crops, mineral and petroleum. Yes, and so this model of growth subordinates uh, its growth models to fluctuations of these prices. So we have cycles. In the beginning of the 21st century, we, we experience uh, growing prices on the commodities. So uh, the, the growth cycles allowed uh, the region to, to experience the growth and uh, to improve the, the income distribution pattern. But now we were experiencing a uh, lower prices of commodities, so the cycle is reversing. This has consequences in the rent management and the drainage of surplus. Then we have this that is constant in the last 30 years, is the industrial regression, the drop in the industrial contribution to GDP, the drop in job creation in this industry, the, the loss of the size of the industry and the productivity uh, indicators, the increased costs and obsolescence of the industry and the worsening of the external deficit of, as a consequence of the import of uh, industrial inputs. Then, we have this concentration in the links with the lowest added value of the global value chain. We we don't have we don't get to add much value to the to these global products. Uh, we also have this this key element with China as the main actor in the 21st century that demands raw materials and offers low cost manufacturers promoting free trade agreements. Uh, China manufactures high uh, uh, value added goods and demands raw materials. So our mode of production is building as a reflection of China's uh, demands. And then we have the international division of labor places, Latin America in a marginal place in the global value chain as a providers of the basic inputs. This will be the consequence of the, the above elements. It does not generate design, innovation, or marketing uh, value added. So uh, as a difference in from Latin America, the Southeast Asia is virtually ingressed, integrated into, into global value change, adding value and generating industrial scaling. Uh, the third uh, issue will be the social decline as a consequence of these two main issues. Uh, the fall in commodity prices, the decline of the pink tide, the, the, the loss of the industrial capacity. We, we are seeing a new cycle of deterioration in social indicators, under unemployment, labor informality, social violence, 
income in distribution inequality, poverty, migration, etc. Of course, uh, COVID situation and pandemic worsened these, indica these indicators, but the these are uh, structural indicators of social deterioration. And this hypothesis from the Marxist develop, uh, dependency theory will be that these differences in productivity will be compensated by greater labor exploitation. And to end this presentation, we have some economic indicators of structural indebtedness and crisis. Being Argentina, uh, the country that experienced the, the highest indebtedness cycles in the last four years during Macri's administration. We have a new cycle of indebtedness uh, in this ratio between external debt and GDP, uh, increasing interest payments, the need for refinancing the, the debt payments and the, the high levels of the country risk and the default risk. We also have this structural accumulation problems being the external and fiscal deficits one of the key elements we also have a structural capital flight linked with the the fiscal paradise uh, and financial de deregulation and we also have this concentration and foreignization of the structural the productive structure with the consequence of the transfer of surplus and we also have crisis uh, the, the the boom of the crisis now due to external strangulation and the weakness of the internal market so these elements uh, will be the way we can see some of the classical uh, dependency theory topics uh, acting in the 21st century uh, of course we could uh, make a specific analysis for each of and every one of the countries that is a uh, work i've done in some of the the jobs i i have here for you to to search uh, but this will be the, the main presentation of the, the dependency theory topics, the Latin America economical criti critical thought and the, the main contemporary issues of today. So thank you very much. I, I, keep, in, I keep here to hear some, some questions. Thank you for presentation, uh, Professor uh, Maria Teresi. Uh, thanks to you, we have gained uh, new knowledge within the scope of uh, dependency theory. And I'm looking, is there any question on YouTube or another link between our presentation? So there is no question uh, and uh, we just thank you for presentation.